Okay. I hope that uh, works. Okay, well, let's start. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Kimberly Snoil, and I'm uh, the chapter lead of Ladies That UX in Utrecht. And um, the, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's difficult maybe to say how many of you are new here today. I don't <laughs> know if you, can, if you can see the hands. <laughs> yeah, I see uh, Kleem has a hand. Um, well, I will tell you a little bit about uh, who we are, what Ladies That UX Utrecht is and what we do before we can we go to our speakers for the day. Um, well, Ladies That UX uh, is a community, a global community, and um, we have chapters all over the world. Um, and we, yeah, we are a community of women, as you can see here. I, I took a screenshot from the website. We want to support each other in our careers um, and um, yeah, push the boundaries, promote female skill and talent. So when we uh, give our meetings, we exist now for since 2016, so four years. Um, and at our meetups, we try to promote other women to speak. And we also have male speakers. And of course, male are, men are also welcome at our meetups. Um, but uh, our core, it started in 2013 in uh, Manchester in England, where uh, two uh, women in UX um, did not have a lot of role models in that time. And they, uh, they founded a community to, uh, to find role models to help each other in their careers. And that's why the core of Ladies at UX is still um, uh, supporting female uh, talent and helping each other. But we're open here in the Netherlands. Uh, we are open to uh, more, um, of course, to everybody. And there's also a chapter in Amsterdam. Um, and uh, yeah, we are the chapter in Utrecht. In total, there are more than 50 uh, communities all over the world, as you can see. I think see. it's too soon for the storm to be um, affecting it. But... Yeah, I think uh, that's it. Um, for to this evening, we have invited Karin and Aldrich. Uh, Karin is the founder of UX Insights um, and owner of User Proof, and she also organizes UX Insights uh, conference. Uh, and uh, Aldrich is the founder of Savvy UX or UX Testing. Actually, we have to change that. Uh, UX Testing, and is uh, um, the, uh, uh, he organizes uh, uh, Savvy UX Summit, also a conference. And these people have um, meant a lot of uh, a lot in the world of UX, and that's why we want to talk to them and ask them their opinions about what is UX, uh, not what is UX, what is the state of UX in the Netherlands, in the rest of the world, and uh, where are we headed? So we're going to talk about the past, why they founded their uh, their uh, conferences and companies, um, where we are now, and also where we are headed. So um, I'm going to stop sharing now. And I would like to ask everybody to uh, close their camera so we can see Aldrich and Karin uh, up close. And then we can start the interview. Okay. Yes. So uh, maybe uh, Karin can start. Uh, can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, something about yourself? Yes, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, oh, sorry. Also, maybe everybody can also turn off their microphone so we don't have uh, any interruptions. Um, and I also forgot uh, we have the Slido. Um, Marcella put it in the chat, I think, the link to the Slido. If you have any questions during the interview, you can uh, ask them uh, in Slido. And we are recording the session. So uh, that's one of the things I forgot to, to mention. But go ahead, Karen. Thank you. Um, well, my name is Karen de Wouwmeester. I am a UX researcher and a background in psychology. I started working as a researcher in 2000. Uh, back then it was just called a usability tester, I think. And in the Netherlands, uh, it was just starting up. So um, yeah, I also organized a conference, but you already explained that. This, so let's, yeah, let's start the conversation, I think. It's my turn. Yes, all the way from Taiwan. So you have to speak uh, very loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Aldrich from Taiwan. Uh, I'm currently uh, a CEO of the uh, and co-founder of the UX te Testing .io. and also I'm the main organizer of the Savvy UX Summit, and also uh, currently I'm also uh, the one of the board member at the US QCC, uh, which is a user experience. Call it. Uh, uh, USQC, 
user express quality certification center and also uh, now one i'm one of the global mem uh, mentors of the uxpa yes we do a lot of things in a lot of yeah. different time zones as you told me so uh, i hope you will get some uh, sleep tonight um uh, is there a, a project also you're working or you're just a higher up right the ceo of the companies and working in these uh, boards and Karin, do you have a project you're working on right now, um, apart from the conference? Well, at the moment, the conference is taking up all my uh, my energy. It's it's in a couple of weeks. So now the focus is on the... I just finished doing a, a, a small study uh, for a customer, um, but uh, now the focus on, on, the, on the conference, yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> I think recently I, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm personally uh, very busy for one project is we helped one England client to test Japanese clients, to Japanese testers. Yeah, so uh, this, uh, this project is very interesting because the time is limited. So we need to finish the uh, user research during uh, three weeks. And in the did same- Did they have to test Japanese? Sorry? What did they have to test? test? Yeah, they want to ask us to help them to recruit Japanese tester also oh, okay. running the user research from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this case is very interesting because uh, for uh, England clients, they really want to hire uh, Japanese who can speak very good English. Yeah, and also because it's a, a, a in-car entertainment system. So we need to recruit the tester who just bought, who just put the car uh, within 12 to eight months. So wow. it's pretty hard and very, very interesting cases. I think if we have enough time, I can share that more later. Okay, that's good. Well, uh, all your story is actually quite interesting. I, uh, I uh, got to know you, yeah, it was maybe last month that we had a, a call. Um, yeah, I'm uh, myself into UX testing and somehow I don't even remember <laughs> all uh, his friends from the company uh, came on my path and I had an interview at the UX testing. Uh, and we also had a call a few weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, then you told me your story about how you be you came into the world of UX. Could you uh, tell it uh, short, maybe um, um, why you are here, that you can tell us about the state uh, of UX? Yeah. So basically, I start I started this company five years ago, and before this company, actually, I I, I was a legal. I I did a legal <laughs> job before. <laughs> Yeah, Not so anymore, guys. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I, I, I never sue for someone. Yeah, I, I'm not a litigation lawyer. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, uh, when, when I work at the big company and I uh, actually accidentally met my co-founders and uh, we have this idea, so we start this company. So I would say actually I start to dig into deeper about the UX when I start this company. But, but uh, during these five years, I realized actually the key value and the key things, what I did is same as legal job I do before. So basically I think uh, uh, what, what my job before is, I need to listen to my clients, know their budget and know their business goal. So I provide a legal opinion for them and then even to help them to apply for something from government and also uh, if we want to sue for some for so sue for some company, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, the same as what I think is a key value is the user experience practitioners. We, we need to learn how to listening. It's not just talking. Yeah, so, so when, I, when I start this company, I realized, yeah, I still use my skill to do this job. Legal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And even uh, I, uh, I think the key, key things I learned from these five years, same as last time we talked, Kimberly, uh, we, I mentioned because I very enjoy to speak simple language to people who don't understand me. Yeah, so same as when I was illegal, uh, my boss always liked to assign me to do business outside because I never mentioned legal terms to my clients. So I don't, I, I won't say, oh, according to the corporate law, Article 100, blah, 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 and my clients always fall asleep. Yeah, so I always use a simple word. So same as when I do business with my clients, I actually, I never mention user experience. Even I seldom mention usability testing or user research because that, is, that, that term is what we, we are familiar with, but it doesn't mean our clients understand what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's nice to hear that you are from the legal world and you uh, found the similarities in the user experience uh, world. 
Um, can you tell us why you founded uh, UX testing and uh, the Savvy UX Summit? And because, because it has a lot of impact of, of UX in the world. So what are your, uh, yeah, your motive to start these companies and this yeah. conference? I think to to be honest, when we start this company, we get, we just don't want to be employees anymore, <laughs> you know. So we want to lead something, we want to generate something, but uh, but I think a key 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 value I want we want to start the Save UX Summit uh, is because I figure out there's a very big gap between UX practitioners and the business world. So I I want I give my personal I mean the, myself a mission is I want to be the bridge between business and the UX. Yeah, so that is why our Savvy UX Summit, uh, our topic, even speaker, and even the attendees, uh, we sell, uh, we, we're not really selling the ticket to UX practitioners because we know there are lots of very good events like uh, Karen Host uh, is, is already fit in the UX researchers. Yeah, but uh, I, want to, I want to shorten the gap is use my summit to make the business people start to communicate with UX people. Yeah, and that's something yeah. we really need uh, in the world because there is a gap. I uh, recognize it myself uh, in my work. And Karin, uh, can you tell us about uh, your motives of starting uh, UX Insights? Yeah, sure. Um, I actually started working as a freelance researcher in 2012. And back then I was talking to my customers and my customers were uh, often UX researchers working in large organizations. And um, a lot of the conversations were about um, the researchers not knowing how to handle a certain challenge or to go about something. They wanted to learn how to create a usability lab or how to communicate with stakeholders, etc. So um, I, was, I was thinking maybe I can bring those people together somehow. And, uh, and see if they uh, can learn from each other. And this was the start for meetups, um, I think in th 2013 or something. And uh, we arranged for uh, about four meetups a year. And uh, immediately a lot of companies wanted to join. They wanted to host a session. They had wanted to speak. They wanted to, um, to send their UX researchers there. So there, there was, a real need, I think, for, for researchers to, to talk to each other. Um, and at some point we had so many ideas and so many companies uh, wanted to participate that we were thinking with a small group of people, why not make it a, a full day of, uh, of uh, talking to each other. And this was actually the birth of UX Inside the conference. So we did the first edition in 2017, 2016. Yeah, 2016. Um, and yeah, it, it started as a very local initiative. So we just wanted to uh, bring uh, uh, Dutch researchers together. But um, the first year, uh, I think also people from Ladies at UX, but also other people were asking, can you do it in English? Because we have like uh, people working in our organization that does, who don't speak Dutch. Uh, so we provided the program, I think roughly half of them in English. And even the first year, although we didn't do anything, any marketing, uh, we uh, got visitors from other parts in Europe. So it really took off. Okay, so I actually hear in your stories, which is, which is actually quite um, logical, that you did not uh, found these uh, conferences or companies to have a real big impact on the state of UX, but this, of course, just happened. Um, well, we as we are, of course, we have founded Ladies at UX Utrecht, but before that, there was Ladies at UX Amsterdam a year earlier, I think in 2000. 15 and so ladies at UX in Amsterdam started and ladies at UX in Utrecht we started in 2016. Um, and uh, we see that also ladies at UX have, has grown so much. It started in 2013. There's a glitch. Yeah. Do you hear me? There's a glitch. Yeah, I have an unstable connection. So oh, I don't know if the rest also has uh, issues because I hear you good and I see everybody still moving. So uh, I still hear you. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, we've come a long way since 2013. Um, do you see a difference from when, when you started uh, uh, today? Because you, you both, uh, Aldi started five years ago, Karen started in 2012 with the meetups. Um, do you see a difference from uh, the time back then in the maturity of UX uh, or, um, or, or, for, or, for example, uh, a lot of uh, how many female uh, designers there are? Um, you had to sell your role back then. What is the difference between now and then? Uh, maybe Karen can I go first. <clears throat> yeah, I think there's a big difference. Um, when we started, we were talking a lot about how to convince other people of the importance of UX and UX research. A lot of the conversations were about proving uh, our re return on investment and uh, how to make sure that we got a seat on the table. And the feeling I have now today is that there is, uh, all the companies are asking for more researchers, for more UXers. Um, yeah, it, it's really grow, uh, grow grew a lot since then. And then what do you think, Aldi? Um, I think from five years ago, because we start to do our summit from three years ago, and but from five years ago, I would say at that time, maybe for me, it's, uh, it's like a UX 1.0. Uh, so I call that is awareness. I mean, so many uh, people start to aware, oh, UX is popular, UX is something, and I want to... Yeah, and I, I maybe I want to be UX because it sounds fancy, okay? And after around like a one or two years, I think it's a UX 2.0 for me. So it's a creation, creation stage. It's a, I, I saw lots of online training, boot camp, and even some school, they provide a master degree or even any, I mean, the uh, UX relative the, uh, courses for the student. So that is a, a creation. And, uh, and I, think, I think now it's around like a, UX 3.0 is a community. Yeah. So you can, you can see so many local co UX community, even a, a, lot, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, conference around the world. So I think it's good. But for me, uh, I've, I'm a little bit worried about from UX 3.0 to 4.0. For me, the most important is 4.0 is market validation. I mean, the impact. So, so uh, because I stay in Asia now, but uh, uh, definitely, I mean, uh, Newfoundland, North America, uh, UX market is pretty, I would say it's pretty mature compared to the other region and, and continents. But uh, uh, especially in Asia and also maybe east of, east of Europe or uh, South, South America and Africa, it's still growing stage. So now it's only community people, I mean the UX practitioner, within the community, everybody know the value of the UX, but outside of the community, even the business, they still don't un understand. So lots of the company, they, they just learn from Google, from Amazon, the other big corporate, they think, oh, we should hire uh, some UX people, but uh, they don't really understand that. So they always hire UX UI designer, but they even don't know how to assign the UX job and research to the UX practitioners. So actually most of the UX UI designer I met in Asia and the other, uh, I mean like Africa and South America, uh, this title of the designer, they usually still doing UI job. Yeah, so, so, so uh, as I mentioned, why uh, I really like to support local community and give everybody some insight is why we need to be uh, very unique and also we need to make a big sound in the market to make people outside of our community to understand what to do and what is the value of the UX. And then we can have the more opportunity to show what we can do. So Aldrich, what is uh, UX to you? UX for me, you know, to be honest, I think it's just common sense. I, I, I would say, uh, I, I read lots of uh, thesis and article and book. I know uh, UX uh, is from uh, part of from uh, psychology, sociology, even a little bit like a computer science, HCI. So, so for me, but, but for me, it's, it's very common sense because like me, I'm a very sensitive person. And uh, I, I can share with everybody, every time when I travel to any country, if I just visit first time, I will spend an hour at the airport and like a creepy person start to <laughs> observe passengers 
oh, what is their behavior? What kind of language they speak? And even I, I really enjoy to spend my weekend on the, uh, at the coffee shop and to, to, to imagine what kind of topic that couple they discuss. Yeah, so for me, I, I would say, yeah, definitely we, 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 we should learn a lot of method and tools how we conduct the user research. But UX for me is already common sense. If you don't have this in this set, in, in at now, I don't believe you can create the good product solution for your clients and users. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so I, 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 I think I can share one more is, uh, I, I really enjoy, uh, this is uh, from my team, is every single uh, team member when they're onboarding first day, I will ask them go back to their home and then to explain what kind of company you work for to your grandparents. Yeah, <laughs> that would be difficult, yes. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah, like what you, you're uh, telling us about visiting the airport and, and watching other people and, and try to understand their behavior. I think this is uh, something we all UXs have in, in common, that we have a, a, a large interest for other people and understanding them and an open, open mind to, to see the world uh, yeah, with an open mind and try to understand what's happening there. Yeah. I think I really like uh, vis uh, visit festivals and uh, music festivals and sit there for a whole afternoon and look, look at people, how they interact and see what they do. It's so much fun. <laughs> nice to see you have this uh, creepy thing in common. <laughs> 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 staring at people all the time <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a it's a part of our jobs and that's great that we can observe people as well in our uh, jobs um Karin what do you think let's go to the the next page because we talked about what you have done and you have uh, uh, uh made uh, you have come up with this conference organized it in 2000 in the in the past um and what do you think is the current state of UX we also talked a little bit of where we where we were and how and uh, where we are now do you think, yeah. what, what, what is the current state? Are we there yet? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> luckily not, because uh, that would not uh, have been a lot of fun if we were already there. No, I, uh, what I see now is that um, a lot of companies and people are interested in UX. Uh, there's a lot of discussion going on uh, about the democratization of UX and UX research. And I, I really appreciate that, that this phase, but I think now it's also important for us to set like the boundaries and to set our standards and communicate the standards and, and uh, become self-confident on what we are and what we are about and what not. Um, so yes, I, I love it that, that a lot of people are interested in UX, but um, what, what is actually good UX research? What are best practices? What is maturity? Um, how, yeah, w when not to include other people, when to incl include other people and what, what skills do you need to really have in your team or in a person to do good design and research? I think for me, this is the next phase. Okay. This is a really interesting topic because I get a lot of questions uh, from people who are switching careers to UX and I hear you're touching on, upon this uh, now. Um, um, and you say it's the next phase. So what would you say to people who are switching careers? What do they need to be? Uh, yeah, I, a, a lot of, if you, if you ask about the background from people working in UX, it's so diverse. Like we even have a legal person here. You know. yeah. <laughs> I'm a psychologist, but there, there, there are so many different backgrounds and that's, that's, that's good. But um, some skills you do really need. And um, you, you have to be, I, I, I don't have the answer yet for this, this, this question. So I can give my, it's something I'm, I'm thinking about now and I'm working on and talking to other people. What, what is really the basic uh, skill you need. Um, and for example, for as a researcher, you really need to understand how to uh, talk to other people and interview and listen. Uh, Aldrich already mentioned it, really listen. This is a, a very important skill and you can 
most people can learn it. It's not, it's not rocket science, but it is something you need to learn. So this is one thing, but also how to do analysis, how to try, uh, get, get to conclusions, um, some basic knowledge about, I'm, I'm talking as a researcher, I'm, I'm a researcher, so, uh, but a basic knowledge uh, about um, validity and uh, quality of research and questions, yeah. But also to, how to communicate to your st stakeholders is very important. Yeah. And um, yeah. Okay. And uh, Aldrich, the question uh, for you, what is the current state of UX worldwide? I think that for me, uh, UX uh, worldwide is a little bit messy. Yeah, uh, why I say that? Because uh, uh, as Karen mentioned, uh, there's no standards. Uh, there's no, uh, uh, I mean, there's no standard or there's no like a fixed courses. And even we don't have the standard how to evaluate who is a qualified use, uh, UX practitioners. So, so uh, for me now is, I think, uh, I think for the older attendees, uh, if, uh, even you are not UX background, that's fine. But uh, I, think, uh, I think we need to jump to next level is UX person, we cannot be complainer. We are very good at finding the problem. We understand, oh, this app, this icon, this user flow is not friendly. We all know that. We, we, we listen to our users. So we are good at finding the problem. But uh, uh, because from previous few years, uh, I help my clients to recruit the researchers. I review above five, 500 uh, portfolio and resume from UX people, uh, I mean, from people who want to apply for UX job, I realized not many people provide the real solution from your research resort. Yeah, and even some people uh, misunderstanding. Okay, I found a problem, so I make a new UI, make the product look good looking, that's all. Yeah, but, the, but, the, but your solution or your recommendation sometimes doesn't fit in the business goal. Yeah. So, so that's why when I coach my mentees, I always recommend everybody, you, I, you, you need to learn some business knowledge. Yeah, I know UX is very uh, fancy, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, some of my friends, they say, hey, oh, I'm UX, sir. Oh, what's UX? Everybody like that. We, we like that title. But uh, what, what is the real things we can deliver, even to your company, to your clients, is you solve the problem. So as Karen mentioned, I also think, uh, the UX researcher, even the designer, I mean, as a UX practitioner, don't forget the business goal in the beginning. Because if you don't know, you will generate right, wrong, wrong UX research for your corporate. Even you cannot fit in the cost. For example, if your boss, they, uh, he doesn't know the UX, but he say, hey, Kimberly, I just have 100 US dollars. I give you a week please test our app the meaning of the user how you can do how you can do that right so if you don't know what is the business goal why your boss want to do research even he doesn't know why the why he has to do research so if you don't know you don't know how to use your weapon so this is also the other problem uh, i saw globally is uh, some people, when they switch the career to the UX, so they will take online courses or even boot camp. So what they, what they learned become their only weapon they can use. So uh, when, they, when he, they join the company and the company says, oh, uh, our, our time is limited. We have to do, uh, we have to do a moderate testing. And, and some, some UX say, oh no, we should meet our users in person. And uh, we need to interview their behavior, blah, blah. But I think that means we are not ready. We are not ready. In we are not ready yet, because for me, UX researcher, you should learn lots of method, skills, and also maybe online platform, especially now, right? Yeah. So, so you, you need to have so many weapons. So when your boss asks you, you should know which which method, which tools, which platform you can use. I do have a question because now you're talking about uh, the role of, of a UX designer or UX researcher. Yeah. Actually, when I was posing this question, I meant more from the business side. So um, 
we the, the the role of ux is growing that is what we all see more people want to be ux designers more people are switching jobs and see that it's uh, an important uh, uh, thing to do but what about the businesses are they um, in the beginning you still what Karen said you, you had to sell uh, your role what is what is ux and why would you have to hire a ux designer um, yeah do you I, think I, the companies have grown and over the world because you told me in our talk you, you, you said, oh, the Netherlands is okay, and uh, I don't know, you, you had it up about a couple yeah. of uh, countries. But some I, countries I, I can share with it. everybody one of the survey we did uh, two years ago, two, 2018. Uh, we interviewed around uh, 3,000 CEO, C-level, C-suits, uh, uh, I mean, reply our, our online survey. And we feel so surprised. 85% of C-levels, C they said, yes, we heard UX, but we don't know the value. We don't know what it is, what it is. So what, but why some of them still hire UX? And they, and they reply us because, oh, I see Google, I see Airbnb, oh, they hire UX. And yeah. sounds like- and We it, have to do it as well. Yeah, we have to do it. Yeah, so they just assigned the uh, HR uh, to start to open the uh, headcount for, for, for the UX. But when the UX joined the company, the company is still not ready yet. And even they don't know how to uh, communicate with UX practitioners. Yeah, so for me now, I would say only very big organization and also the consultant agency fully understand how, uh, what the UX researcher they can do. But the still many big corporate, they, why they hire UX? Just because their competitor do that. So they do yeah. that. They still don't really understand why. Yeah. You see that actually reflected in, in, in the position of the UX, UXers and, and the, the, the phase in which they are uh, included in the project. Are they included in, in the real early phases when uh, the, the business is still deciding what are we going to build, yeah. what are we going to do, or is it that they just um, build something and then say, okay, UXer, make something nice of it and UX researcher, test it, please. And uh, I still, a lot of companies in, in the Netherlands are still the, 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 lo the last one I mentioned, I think. Although we see, we see uh, transforming, trans transitioning towards more uh, early phase research and early phase design um, activities. So, yeah. Because yeah. that is what I learned uh, maybe during my studies of the interaction design that we are the ones who have to find out what the need is and what's the problem and what's the need and uh, have these workshops with the, with the business to find out what they really need. And um, yeah, it's uh, crazy actually that it's not so common that we are in that phase yet. So uh, I wonder maybe also in the chat or uh, um, yeah, I wonder what people's, uh, other people's experiences are with this. Um, in my next oh sorry yeah I, I wanted to add that as a freelancer i get i still get often asked for doing a usability test and then when i start asking them about what is your product about what is the need you want to uh you want to uh, solve or the problem you want to solve they they can't really have a good answer and they actually want to say then, okay, I want, uh, yeah, I want to know this as well. <laughs> then the pro product is already quite uh, yeah, almost finished. So yeah, yeah, still. So actually I hear that uh, we are not that mature yet uh, in the Netherlands uh, as, as um, what, yeah, uh, we have not reached the maturity level that uh, we should uh, have. Uh, I don't know how it is uh, maybe in uh, Taiwan or in America because uh, Aldrich, um, UX testing is based in uh, California, right? Yeah, yeah. So what is uh, what is it uh, like in America? Do the companies there understand uh, what what UXers do? Yeah, I think because, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the leading, uh, I mean, digital company like uh, Google, Facebook, yeah, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, ev everybody in Silicon Valley. So I think uh, they, they become the sample for the uh, American company, like uh, yeah. uh, for everybody understand, oh, we have the very solid UX research team. And even mm -hmm. some, some, some company, they, they separate the researcher and the UX designer. So UX designer is, is, is under design team, but the UX research is on the research team. Okay. 
Yeah, so so I think uh, uh, the 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 big the big company they give us a sample like uh, how we invest in that. Even even you can see like a a a CEO of the Amazon and also the uh, founder of the Airbnb. They always they they all mention they invest in UX and how many US dollars return in public. Oh, wow, so yeah. so yeah, so they they give the market understand. Oh, okay, why Airbnb is so successful? Wow, why Amazon? Their stock price going up, and even their decision maker mentioned that. So, so to be honest, I'm not pretty sure whether they fully understand that, but they're the willing case. to invest in UX, yeah. and even they speak out for the world. Yeah. So, so I would say uh, why I think uh, US still the most competitive uh, UX uh, market in the world. Yeah. What do you think about Australia? Because I also have the feeling that Australia is very advanced. Uh, I, I, I found a very one interest, uh, interesting thing is uh, most of the UX researcher I met from Australia, they're all psychologists. But uh, in States, uh, most of the researcher I met, they, they were designer, but they switched their career to researcher. Hmm. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not pretty sure why, but uh, that is very interesting insight I got from these two countries. Interesting. Yeah. But I would say Australia is good, but uh, not good enough like U.S. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, how would we? Uh, how can can we measure the state? Because now we're talking about uh, um, how far, how, how far, what the maturity level is of U.S. in different countries and in the Netherlands. Um, how can we measure it? Uh, are there, uh, what qualifiers or param parameters are there involved? You know, Karin. Or is it more a feeling or a, yeah? No, I, th I think what we already discussed, what, what is the position of the UX or in a, in a research, in a, in a company? Uh, on what level do you have impact? Um, and in mean, which phase, yeah, which you just uh, Yeah, what thought. phase and what level uh, do you have leadership from UX or, or not? Um, and yeah, the, I think also, the how how many UXers you have, of course, but also the role differentiation. If you have like uh, people dedicated to, for ex example, uh, research ops, uh, the operational part of research, that's also uh, an indication of maturity, I think. Uh, yeah. Albert, do you have anything to add? Mm, I think for me is. Uh, I, I still see a, a big gap between business and the UX, as I mentioned. So uh, I think uh, how UX practitioners, we can show more data for decision maker to understand what we do. That is very important because, uh, 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 so, so for example, how we define the UX issue in the beginning, if we want to generate the, generate the UX plan, right? So actually, uh, most of the big corporates I collaborate with, you know, they define the UX issue by quantitative data. And uh, they will assign the research team to do qualitative research. And after research, definitely redesign and the developer team will developing and release the product. And they will see the quantitative data, the number is going up. I mean, like a conversion rate is going up or I mean the churn rate is reducing. Yeah, so, so I think this is very interesting is because uh, some of the researcher I met, uh, definitely uh, some of them are from psycholo psychology, sociology background. So we, we are focused on very qualitative, but, uh, but uh, when we discuss with the people who is not UX, sometimes if we just mention something, we got the insight from the users for, for the, business background or I mean non-UX people, I feel like they don't really trust. They feel like mm, your feedback is maybe it's, it's, it's biased. It's only from you. It's not from objective data. Yeah. So, so that's why I also recommend some of uh, my mentees. Uh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can just get online courses to, uh, to understand how to review Google Analytics. Yeah. So, so I, I think I think that's maybe it's a new skill or, or for the researcher we should understand. But I'm not pretty sure, Karen, you agree or not. But the, but the, from my side is, 
uh, that's that is also one step. Uh, one more step, you can communicate with the people who doesn't really understand UX. Yeah, I th I th I really love the companies where uh, th those different um, people work together, like the data analysts, uh, ana analyst, analysts, analysts. <laughs> Uh, for example, and the market researchers and the, and the UX researchers and they all work together and they have all have their own data, but they complement each other. I think that is also a level of maturity to reach. And I do agree, it would be great if you as, uh, as a UXer understand a little bit about Google Analytics, for example, or how to do a survey or to have like this quantitative data, it really helps. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult. If you want to do it right, you have to have a lot of knowledge about it. And I started the Google Analytics course once and I, I just didn't, um, I didn't feel secure to use the data because I was not sure. So I thought, no, I, I should, the specialists should do the data analyt analytics and I should do my research, but it's good to understand when you can when you can use that data and how to use the data and to to complement each other Kimberly are you mute oh no i don't think so hello can you yeah. hear me yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> where are you Help. yeah no, i really <laughs> I really like uh, Google Analytics as well, that you can see what happens with the conversion after you have uh, um, uh, uh, brought your piece of uh, uh, design life, you know? So that's uh, really good to complement each other. Okay, um, so let's go uh, to the future uh, of uh, UX or the current situation. Aldrich already touched upon it a little bit. Um, what, do you, what influence do you think COVID-19 has had on, uh, on uh, the state of UX? Yeah, I mean, for personally, I, I feel weird this year because I usually have lots of business trip. Yeah, but this year I never fly. Yeah, but uh, for the UX, uh, actually, I'm a little bit uh, worried about the future because I, uh, some of my clients, uh, they, they even lay off researcher. Because uh, you know, this year everybody we need to survive, yeah. so maybe they need to focus on sales, marketing, more than research. So I mean, thirty percent of my clients they even lay off their research team because they think they think, okay, research is not a priority for surviving, for survival. Yeah. So I'm not pretty sure. It depends on when COVID, uh, when COVID uh, end up. And but at the same time, I think it's also a good time for the researcher. If you never try, I mean, like remote, uh, even you use a Zoom or even you use a Google Meet or any other tools, if you never run remote testing now, you should start to practice yeah. <laughs> because, because I, I don't think you can do uh, research and I mean, interview in person. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, yeah, so for me, uh, I would say, I try to be positive, but uh, from objective data, I mean, from my research, even from my clients, I feel a little bit uh, negative about at least this year and next year. Mm, okay, and for Karin, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I have the same worry. Um, yeah, a lot of research was uh, was actually put on hold. Uh, people are, businesses are, are, are taking a step back so yeah if it, it takes a long time still then i don't know how many will fall over and can't uh, proceed as we would like to and on the other hand it's a good time to get more outside of the the ways we i think Eldrick already mentioned it uh, we we are used to doing research in one way and now you have to find other ways and that's that's also an opportunity and I think a lot of researchers and UXs are discovering that it also has advantages because now uh, you, you, you can reach people from all over the world yeah. in, in just as easy. So that's nice. And uh, the digital space also can help you to, to gather data in, in different ways. For example, it's very easy for people to 
to um, participate in, in a diary study and send over like images of their, their uh, daily use of, of, or their environment or videos or um, share other data. So yeah. it's also a time to be creative and, and try new things. Yeah. So that's a good thing. I also want to add one more thing is uh, because now everybody, I mean, we are remote. So usually what you will see from your tester is their face and what they said, right? So, so some research project, uh, it's hard to conduct. For example, uh, I remember two years ago, I visited Fitbit, uh, their headquarters in San Francisco. They built up the fax gene. So they invite the tester come into the gym and then running and then try to, try to observe how they interact with Fitbit. So this kind of testing will postpone because we cannot do that. Even you cannot, you cannot ask for the tester, can you run in front of your camera? I want to see you running, <laughs> right? So some offline research, uh, definitely uh, it's influenced by COVID a lot. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, so only, I think only digital product uh, is easier to conduct by, I mean, the remote tool. But if you are like, a, for example, uh, 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 three years ago, we also helped one airline company to, uh, to interview and to optimize their business class passengers, their experience from check-in to launch to boarding. Yeah, but now we cannot do that because we, we, we cannot go to the airport and then follow the passenger mm. and do research. Yeah, so I mean, some type of the research um, may be hard. Uh, I mean, during COVID nineteen. Yeah. And uh, other types, as is like UX testing, quantitative research online, that is uh, maybe growing then. Or not yeah, growing. yeah. I think yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm not trying to do marketing. Yeah, this is a community event, so I don't do marketing. But uh, yeah, our platform is uh, is definitely helped. Uh, uh, most of the researcher you can conduct a remote uh, 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 research and uh, but uh, but I still uh, uh, have the meeting with my team is how we use more technology to help research to get the user insight deeply than before because now you only one thing you can get is camera yeah, yeah. so th so that's why I mean we build up our own AI system so we detect the emotion detection also voice recognition because we want to help the researcher to get more insight and efficiently because uh, uh, in the past, uh, uh, some of my, I mean, for example, one of my clients, they, uh, they are a very big company in Australia. So they can assign a different researcher, fly to Japan, fly to China, fly to Hong Kong, do their research. So they can take around like a two months for the one project, but now everybody's remote. So, so even cut the budget. So maybe any, uh, every project is shortened to two weeks. So how you, how you leverage online platform uh, to help you to run the research, uh, I mean, that is very important for now. Yeah. And then the, the, the step after is how to have impact in, in your organization, right? Because it's, it's, I think, easier if you meet your colleagues and you, you just meet them with, at the coffee machine and, and talk to them or know what uh, conversations are going on and now everything is online so you have to to schedule a meeting so it's more difficult to have impact and to make connections in your uh, organization and to find how, who are the important stakeholders who i have to talk to and uh, what are their their current issues so it's I, that that is definitely more difficult i think doing with remote working you, Especially uh, for new new people in an organization. Have you any solutions to that yet? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. no. Oh, I thought no. maybe you had a good tip. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it, I agree. That's uh, almost impossible now to uh, just find those people or just chat chat with a lot of uh, people in the company. Just find yeah, keep uh, meeting new people online then this time. Yeah, and. Uh, what's the ideal situation when it comes to the state of UX? What should we aim for? Uh, and Karin, because you said if we were there yet, it would not be any fun. So what would be the ideal situation for you? Yeah, I, I, I found that a very difficult, find that a very difficult question to answer. I, the ideal situation. I think we're always growing and, and changing that is in our nature. So 
I don't know what the end state would be that I'm looking for. But um, yeah, I, the, the issues we, we discussed earlier, I w it would be great if we, we have in every company an understanding of what UX is about and uh, have an impact on, on uh, product development at early stage and a true understanding of what we can do. And that is, that is something I'm aiming for, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I also agree. That's, uh, it's so uh, tiring to have to explain every time why you're, uh, uh, why you're here and what's the importance of UX and you just want people to know it already. Cause it's so obvious, <laughs> why don't they yeah. know it yet? Do you have uh, anything to add, Audrey? Mm, for me, I think um, ideal uh, for me is, I think I, I want every people uh, who want to be UX to accept the world is changing. Yeah, so, so you know why, why I say that? Because uh, every time when I join the conferences, even the meetup, so many people always ask me like, how I convince my boss and uh, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I, I, what, what I learned from even my own company journey is I accept the world is changing every day. So, so now, uh, so there's no standard and there's no answer for everybody's how to convince your boss because I never talk to your boss. Yeah, so I think I think we just can share some tips, but the, I think the mindset change is very important. In I mean, when I start this company, I feel like why we need to know the UX and why human behaviors always change. Yeah, why user tell a lie to me? So I feel mm -hmm. very negative about. I don't really want to do this job. Why every day change? Yeah, <laughs> but the, but the, when I had a meeting with the one a uh, 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 famous bank in states. And the female CEO asked me, hey, Aldrich, tell me just one thing or a sample, why I have to invest in UX. And I, I don't know, I just asked her, can you share with me a little bit when you first time to meet your husband? And she say, oh, don't, handsome, muscular. Yeah, I said, oh, that's good. And so you guys met at the school and then get married. And she said, yes. But I said, how about now? How long you guys get married? And she said, 20 years. I said, oh, how about now? Don't mention him. <laughs> Useless. I said, see, you change. The world is changing. So UX, our goal and our responsibility is to understand why people change. And then we fit in the trend and then provide the best solution and product for our user. Yeah, but it doesn't mean when we provide one solution that is totally perfect. No, that means we still need to keep doing testing, keep doing research because currency every day change. So hu human also change every day. So the, uh, the skill you actually should have is uh, to be adaptive to a yeah. changing world. Yeah. yeah, I would also say compromise, Agreed. compromise. You, you, yeah. you cannot always focus on Oh, oh uh, the, the icon looks old and lo looks ugly and I want to change. And, and why are developing are stupid, blah, blah, blah. We, we cannot be complainer. Yeah, sometimes you need to compromise because every stakeholder, every department, everybody, we have our own reason why we set up this. Yeah, so, so you cannot feel like, oh, UX is higher than design, higher than marketing or higher than developing, no. I think we should be the core and then to organize everybody. So that's why uh, I, I share that so many times at different conferences. I think user experience sometimes is a little bit misunderstanding. I would say stakeholder experience may be best understanding of this. So don't forget to talk to marketing team, sales team, developer team, real designer team to understand why this project I need to involve, every, involve everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Sally. Okay, um, it's uh, five past five uh, in uh, the Netherlands, at least. Um, so uh, I think it's time for the questions from Slido. Uh, Marcella put the link in the chat for you. Um, and you can vote on the questions which are already on there. So if you don't have enough time, you at least have answered the most important or the best voted questions. Um, so can we go to Slido, Marcella, and I will give the floor to you. 
Yeah, so I'll start with the first question, which I think is one for Karin, where they ask, uh, how does psychology help UX designers to do their job better? Because uh, very few people have obviously a background in psychology. So what could be a suggestion? And I guess they are also looking for like maybe books or tips, how to start, what would be a good uh, yeah, kickstart to get the basic knowledge of psychology to use yeah. as a designer. I actually get the, the questions a lot. You are a psychologist and now you're working in a business, in a company. How does it work? And oh, it's such a shame you don't use you don't use your psychology anymore. So then I have to explain why I do. I think one real important thing is to understand how people make decisions and what their biases are. We have a lot of biases and um, it's very, uh, if you talk to customers and you want to understand them, they tell you a lot, they tell you a story uh, about what they believe or think their behavior is about, but it's probably not the actual truth because we as humans don't understand our own uh, motivations often. So it's good to have to, to understand what people are capable of in, in knowing about themselves and not. Um, I think a very good book to read is from Susan Weinschenk about that. It's about the, uh, the, the behavior of, of human that, that we need to know as, as designers. Um, the other aspect of, my, uh, of being a psychologist is understanding about, uh, about research. Uh, if, as a psychologist, you learn about doing a real scientific research and we don't have to do scientific research, but the research basics on how to uh, uh, find a good target group, uh, when to do qualitative research, quantitative research, how to do analysis, etc. These are also skills you can really use as a UXer. I don't... Just to follow up your question or the question with another one that's here in Slido. How can we make sure that we can still analyze nonverbal communication now that we are doing all our tests online? Because obviously offline it's a lot easier to see how people are reacting and yeah, how they are sitting in the room and stuff like that, how they enter the room where you're doing the research and now you only have like this bit. How yeah. can you still analyze nonverbal communication now that we're doing everything online? Yeah, I think Eldridge can, can all right also talk about that. But my experience is that, yes, it's very limited, but also it's, it adds something because um, I do a lot of interviews with like this, uh, like Zoom or Skype or, or something. And it's also fun because you see the back in the background, you see the houses of people, you see like children walking in or cats, uh, 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 maybe a husband is bringing some coffee, a phone is ringing. So it's actually more like a natural setting than if you ask people to join you in a, in a research setting. So uh, sometimes people do feel more at ease, more comfortable. And I feel that the conversation is actually more more at ease and more natural but that depends on on how comfortable people are talking online yeah so i totally agree with what karen mentioned because uh, we we also test that before is we invite the tester coming to the lab and we can tell they they are very nervous and even some of testers because they get paid so they're trying to say anything good everything good yeah but we say no we need you criticize our product and they say oh yeah so, but now, yeah, it's definitely it's, uh, everybody at home or at the office. So it's a com comfortable uh, environment. It's good. But uh, to be honest, the question is pretty hard. I even don't know. But uh, I think, uh, I think uh, what I do, uh, I mean, uh, du during COVID-19 is I spend more time than before to do small talk. I, want, I need to make sure, for example, in, uh, in the past, I only spend like a five minutes. I say, hey, Kimberly, how are you? Oh, you're from Newfoundland. Oh, I like, I like the country. Oh, oh, I just just try to small, small talk. But now I try to make the small talk is a medium or a big talk because I need to make sure that someone who in front of the camera, I can tell her face, uh, their face and the behavior is totally relaxed. Yeah, so now I spend around like 15 to 20 minutes even 
if I know who they are uh, before the trading, I will linking or Google them to, to know, oh, which school you graduate, uh, what's your background. So I try to find more common ground to make the tester feel relaxed and we kind of, we kind of like a friends. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not pretty sure whether I replied to this question, but uh, this is a small tips I, I do now than before. Yeah, I think they are great tips, thank you. Aldrich, I have a completely different question from you, for you, uh, which I personally quite like, and I'm curious to hear what you'll answer. Um, the question goes as follows. In Africa, they have skipped certain developments. They even have a word for it. Do you see chances in Asia for UX taking bigger steps, for example, by copying best practices? Yeah, I think actually, uh, actually in Asia, I would say it's booming, super booming. And now we collab with uh, each country. I mean, like uh, we collab with the local community, UX Thailand, UX Vietnam, UX Malaysia, UX Indonesia, UX Singapore, all of the community we collab with. But each local community, at least they have 10,000 members. So I would say it's very, very big sound in the market now. But uh, as I said, uh, uh, now it's, uh, it's very amazing. So, so, so many UX practitioners, they didn't do UX job. So that's why that is also one of the main goal. Uh, why I want my summit can be the leading summit to educate the market. Hey, 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 don't be lazy. Yeah, okay. Can we learn, can we learn from Europe and from, from states? Like what is a real UX job we do? Yeah, but then in Africa, uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I had a session with the US Kitchen, uh, which is based in Nairobi, Kenya. And I, I, know, I know the situation from their country, especially their internet in infrastructure. So, so, so uh, uh, it's pretty hard for them now to grow in the UX because uh, uh, they can do remotes, but the, their internet infrastructure is not really good. So sometimes even they do interview, uh, it's not really stable. So uh, I would say Africa is very potential because I realized Africa has so many talented designers. And if you have design background, you have very big advantage to be UX practitioners. If, I mean, even you, you don't have to be UX researcher, but you can be very good UX designer. Thanks. So the question that's voted up most, and I guess it makes sense because we all want to make sure that we are prepared for the future, is what new trends and talking points should designers be aware of? Maybe Karen wants to start trying to answer. Do you see any trends happening maybe in the design world, but maybe outside of the design world as well that we should be aware of in our work? Well, if if I if I take a look at the, what the for example the the talks that we received uh, for our conference um, a lot of talking is about um, stakeholder management already discussed here how the importance of this uh, it really really should be a focus the upcoming period I think and also about how to share your insights at larger scale. So if you have within a team an insight about the UX experience, how can you make sure that other people in your organization are aware of it and also make, yeah, make good use of it? Um, these are also very important issues. Um, inclusion, of course, a very large topic at the moment. Um, how to make sure that you design for for different type of users and different type of people and include them in your research and include them in your design process. Mm, let me think. Maybe Aldrich can take over and I yeah. think if I can think of yeah. more. Yeah, so for me, I think uh, in the future, uh, definitely more and more technology will existing. So yeah. uh, keep learning uh, any, any online tools or platforms or even new technology to help your research understandable yeah. yeah you know why i said that i think most every single ux practitioners you need to learn how to be the good storyteller you know why i don't really like to invite a researcher to the business meeting because we keep speaking the language we understand 
But the non UXer, they don't really understand what we do. You, you don't have to share like, oh, oh, I interviewed Cambly and, and she, her persona is blah, 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 blah. Okay, the business people doesn't does care. Yeah, so, so I would say your report, your insight, how you show, how you speak the story is very important. So I recommend everybody to learn how to use chart to speak story to non UXer, like a pie chart or any kind of chart, how you use a chart and even how to shorten and listing. You know, I, I always coach my team member every time if, I mean, some of my team member, they write a long paragraph to me. I say, sorry, I don't have time to read. This is not good user experience and reading experience. So your report, your insights, what you get from user, try to listing to make non UXer fully understand what kind of insight you get and, and also be with your solution. I, I think, I think I, I'm not sure why you, UX researcher, we need to learn how to write the article, but I think that's very, very a basic uh, skill we should have. So, so, you know, when I, when I, especially when I review the resume and portfolio, so many people write a long paragraph and tell me so many details, but the, as a recruiter, I want to know, okay, how you conduct this research, why you decided this research plan, why? So I want to see, I want to see, okay, you talk to your business owner, you talk to your product owner, you know the business goal. So according to the business goal and why I generate this, this UX research plan and then how I conduct that and what insight I get. So I give the recommendation and advices how we improve that. But I would say I seldom see that kind of portfolio because everybody too focused on make your prototype look good, make your design look beautiful. But for me, it, it doesn't make sense because UX should be the best storyteller in the world. Sorry, I'm too excited, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is really important to speak the language of the business uh, in the state for the state of UX to also make different uh, businesses understand our world. So uh, it's a really good point. All right. Do I have time for one more question, Kimberly? Yes, I think so. I only need five minutes uh, for the <laughs> ending. So uh, the question is, what do you think about the statement? Everyone is a UXer. Kanyan, do you want to start again? Or I think I actually wrote an article. Everybody is a not everybody is a UX researcher. I don't know what my 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 title was exactly, but I think it's an interesting discussion. I don't think everyone is a UXer. I think most people can be become a good UXer, but you have to have some basic skills, and not everybody has the skills. So I think we should be careful on on what yeah and 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 be a little protective of what ux is about not too much because it's important to include others but yeah we we can be proud of our skills and and make sure that un other people understand the importance of of having the skills so yeah no i don't agree <laughs> uh, yeah i sam uh, i don't think everybody can be uh, i mean should be uxer but everybody can be UX because you know we are human. So uh, same as the uh, what I think the the best skill the UX that we have is empathy. Yeah. So so you know I remember uh, two years ago we had the one project is I need to interview the pregnant woman, especially second time pregnant pregnant woman. I even cannot imagine if I have a baby. Yeah. So. You know, what I do is I live with my tester. I observe their family behavior every single day. Yeah, so, so I, I would say, yeah, the human, we definitely, we have empathy, just we don't use that. So if you want to be the good UXer, in a, not only now, but also in the future, try to aware you have empathy. <laughs> And cu curiosity, you have a real yeah. interest in understanding this woman, woman who is pregnant for the second time. Yeah. And you don't want to 
have a quick conclusion what you think you might think she uh, her problem is about but you really want to understand and yeah and those yeah, and also I think uh, uh, when I coach my mentee, I always ask everybody listing the question you will ask for the tester because the, the question you ask, you cannot lead test, uh, tester reply your question. So you need to keep, you need to keep open, open question for them. And if you see the tester, they feel confused or anything, uh, I mean, any emotion in between, you need to ask them like, oh, what are you looking for? Or any information makes you hesitate here? Yeah, so asking question is also the skill you need to practice. Because if you never practice, you will just use your, you will be biased. You will just like, why Karen stay there? Why she feel hesitate? Yeah, even when you ask a question, you will say, oh, and the icon is ugly, it makes you confused? Yeah, don't ask that. Yeah, so as I said, the question you ask make the question open, that is also the skill we need to learn and prepare for. Thanks. Um, so then I guess my final question, which is not insider, but what do you think is your biggest uh, challenge or your biggest uh, upcoming uh, goal that you set for yourself for the rest of this year? Well, actually, my personal goal is, okay, we have like the conference now, but now, and I really like to, that, that UX is growing, but now I want to be part of the community that, that translate what is our standard, what is what are best practices, what are, and to help uh, teach them to other people who want to become a UXer. So I want to... Um, yeah, I want to, to learn from other people even more and then uh, help to create training and um, uh, other ways, workshops and events to, to share the knowledge again. Right. What about you, Alder? I think for me, the big challenge is I, I want to invite everybody uh, within the community. We need to make big sounds in the market together. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, I mean, now because it's, uh, now it's in learning stage for everybody. So, so most of people, when they join the community, they, uh, they want to learn something. But I, was, I, I want to give everybody different mindset is the gift first. So, so, uh, so it's, it's tough, you know, especially uh, the culture inside. Uh, in Asia, I think uh, people, yeah, really enjoy the community, but... Uh, like me, I, I, I was a tech first person before, but, uh, but uh, when I started this company and then I, 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 I make this company globally and then I realized, no, I need to support. I, I need to support and help more and more people. And then I can convince more uh, business, uh, business people to understand what we do. So same as the, same as the vision myself is I, I keeping myself as a bridge between business and the, and the UX. So the challenge, uh, as, as you asked me, the challenge is how I can change more and more people mindset, not just tech first, it's a gift first. Yeah, even you engage with, engage in the local community and the event, that's also gift, right? So, so if, we, if someday we can make this lady, that is the UX event is around 1000 attendees, that's a very big sound for the market. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, even engagement is also one of the giving you can do. Yeah, so give first and then we make this community stronger and also try to make connection with the different nationalities because what I learned from my personal, I mean, the company journey is diversity is very important for you to be the global researcher. Cool, thank you. I'll hand over the digital floor back to you, Kimberly. Can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, um, well, I just want to uh, close this session off. Thank you very much, Aldrich and uh, Karin, um, for this meetup. And I hope uh, our audience, it was a very well uh, sought audience, so I hope they uh, liked it. Um, um, Marcella, will you post the questionnaire in the, in the chat? Because we have some uh, some questions about the meetup, if you liked it and what you would like to see in upcoming uh, meetups. 
I just yes. want to tell you about the events that uh, we are uh, partnering with, which are coming up. This is, uh, uh, of course, UX Insight Festival, what uh, Karin is uh, organizing, 14 to 18 September online festival for UX researchers. Um, you can get your ticket, and if you are, and as a community uh, member, you can get 10% off. So please uh, keep our uh, social media um, in the holes, as you say it in, English, in the Dutch, <laughs> watch our social media, and you will get the 10% uh, discount. An other uh, event that, that we are partnering with is uh, uh, Interaction Design Day, IXDD, that is 29th of September. So it's going to be a busy month. The theme is Culture and Sustainability. So please, um, um, you can also visit this event. Uh, well, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, this is the organizing team. So we are with uh, a few more ladies than you have seen uh, today, only Marcella and me. Um, but uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Here's our uh, email address, our meetup page, and our uh, LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and Slack and everything. So if you have any questions um, or if you want to join our Slack community, don't, uh, be, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we hope to see you uh, in our next meetup. And we want to do a hybrid virtual or um, uh, have virtual, have real meetup because we cannot uh, invite a lot of people, of course. So if you are working at a company that would like to host us uh, for only a few, I don't know, the maximum of people we can host uh, normally. Uh, and for the people who aren't, don't want to uh, go to a real meetup yet, then we will have a live stream. So this is what we, what we want to do in the future. So if you have a company that wants to host us, please uh, reach out to us. Did I forget anything, Marcella? No, that's it. No, you never forget anything. Ah, stop it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I see a lot of nice... Uh, oh, and you can now open up your uh, camera if you want to stay and have a chat. So uh, be, feel free. And you see a lot of uh, nice things already. Oh, for the people who have to go, bye bye, bye, Rox. I just I I forgot to mention one thing about uh, the conference, and I really need to tell you, yeah. ladies, that UX because this was this year was the first year we actually had to uh, positively discriminate toward men in our program. We had almost only women there. <laughs> and then we were looking at the program and thought, okay, that's not good. We need some diversity. So we had to positively discriminate uh, and selected some uh, very, very well speakers. But it was so, yeah, it was so good thing to, to notice, I think. Yeah. yeah. How, why would that be? Are there, uh, are the, were the men hesitant? Are the ladies too... Uh... Well in previous way. years, I think it was the other way around. There are a lot of, there are more men, I think, on stage, feeling comfortable telling their story. Um, but in UX research is, is more, I think there are more women in research than in design. I'm not mm. sure, but that's my personal, if I look around, I see a lot of women going for research. Yeah, I think I so. Know. I think you have a lot of men that are kind of like mixing it with a bit of front end or prototyping. So in UX design, you see more men, I guess. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, most most of the, I mean, not most, I mean, the talented research I meant are all women. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah. He knows where he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I cannot say something wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you again, Charlotte. <laughs> She's also one of our members who's at every meetup. So, uh, finally, we see each other again. <laughs> I see a lot of names. A big turnout for this one. Yeah. Really cool. I hope everyone will uh, be able to fill in some uh, some forms, some uh, questionnaires. I will stop recording and I will check how to um, um